Hello everyone and welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with a couple of items for the 3D printer. So these are insulating sheets for the bottom of the heated bed. You basically have a PCB on the heated bed with some thick snaking copper tracks and uh, the printer runs a current through that track and heats the bed. Normally there is no insulation on the bottom and by adding some the bed should be able to maintain a higher temperature and be more stable because it will be losing less of that heat to the environment. So that's where these kind of sheets come into play. I've ordered uh, two different materials. I wasn't sure which one would be best. So the first one is uh, this type of uh, foam with some um, aluminum foil padding. But uh, this does not inspire a lot of confidence. Um, I'm really not sure how good this foam is and uh, how well it will withstand those high temperatures of 70 degrees or above. As usual, there are no specs for this uh, thing, just pictures showing it stuck to the bottom of the heated bed. I also got a second type of uh, sheet. This one is made out of uh, cork uh, style material. It's uh, thinner than the first one, but unfortunately, as you can see, it arrived uh, damaged because, well, it was packed in a uh, simple plastic envelope and it got bashed and smashed uh, during shipping. So maybe I could still apply it even though it has these ribs because it has this um, uh, adhesive uh, backing. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure which one of these would be more efficient. So what do you think? I would love your feedback in the comments below. One thing is for sure I was able to get the uh, foam style material for half the price of the cork one. For those that are interested in professional made PCBs, I would like to announce the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB, which is a professional PCB manufacturing service with very affordable prices. You can get 10 PCBs for just $2 and a stencil for just $6. All of this with really fast turnaround times. I'll place the link in the description so you can check them out. Next, I'll show you another upgrade for the 3D printer. These are bigger bed adjustment uh, wheels. Originally, the printer comes with some uh, small knobs and it's kind of difficult to get in there under the bed and adjust those with precision. It's kind of an uncomfortable position. You could, of course, go to Thingiverse and print yourself some bigger knobs, but uh, you would be running the printer for hours to get those four knobs and the quality wouldn't be as good as with these molded ones. For $3 I ordered a set of these from China, so let's install them and see how they look. Just look at how much easier it is to adjust this one, you have a higher degree of precision, than it is to adjust this one, which is harder to turn and the, the position is really awful. As usual, you'll find links to all of the items shown in the video in the description below. Also related to my uh, 3D printer, in uh, previous videos I showed how I got this uh, vibration noise coming uh, of the BL Touch sensor. So the metal pin vibrates slightly inside the plastic channel while the motors move and create vibration. That's something you cannot easily solve because the pin needs to be free for movement. The problem might be less obvious on an original BL Touch sensor. Uh, I don't have one, but I'm just uh, thinking here. They might be using tighter tolerances, but on mine, which is a uh, clone of the original sensor, the problem is really annoying. So I had this idea that if I were to somehow add a small O-ring on that metal pin, it would stop it from vibrating. So I ordered the smallest O-rings I could find from this company I found on uh, AliExpress and uh, they uh, seem to be uh, specialists on O-rings. I got these which are 1.8 millimeters uh, the internal diameter and they truly are very small O-rings, the smallest ones I've seen. However, I didn't think this uh, through because uh, yes, the O-ring fits the metal pin tightly, but the O-ring needs to be attached to the plastic shell of the sensor to stop the pin from vibrating. And uh, I could glue the o-ring to the body of the shell just where the metal pin exits but still I need to make sure I don't glue the uh, metal pin as well. 
because that would stop the sensor from working. So if you have a better idea, let me know in the comments below, but I think I should order a spare sensor just in case I break this one while attempting the mod. In uh, Vollog 193, I showed some JST PH 2-pin uh, SMD connectors. Those were 2 mm pitch and good for up to 2 amps and 100 volts per pin. Now I ordered a set of JST GH which have 1.25 mm pitch and are good for up to 1 amp and 50 volts per pin. These are obviously better if you are space constrained and it's nice to have these uh, different options uh, when designing a PCB and you can decide whichever to use based on the requirements and constraints. Don't forget to check out the links I place in the description for all of the items shown in the video. Next up a uh, simple 18 ohm power resistor rated for 25 watts. I will be using this thing as a load to test uh, various circuits and in fact I have been wanting to build myself a passive load for a long time. Just various resistors placed on a big heatsink with mounting posts because sometimes you want a simple clean passive load on the output of your circuit while testing to eliminate the possibility of an electronic load introducing unwanted noise or uh, oscillations onto the device under test. So I have a bunch of these uh, resistors, power resistors, I also have a heat heatsink and uh, uh, I'll get started on, our, on that project uh, soon enough I hope. I announced in a previous video that I would like to make a battery pack to power voltage reference that needs about 15 volts of the input. Some viewers suggested I should use lithium ion 14500 cells because they have roughly the same size as a AA cell and here there are. I ordered these uh, uh, battery sockets designed for uh, AA cells. Uh, they can hold 6 AA cells. I should be able to make a nice 5S or uh, or a 6S pack, but I think uh, 5S will be um, uh, sufficient. That would give me enough headroom to have a small LDO to keep the voltage at a constant 15 volts for the voltage reference. So this is another project that I hope to uh, work on soon and get finished. This is a power cord for the TS100 uh, soldering iron. So it has a uh, standard uh, 2.5 uh, millimeter jack at one end and an XT60 plug at the other end. So this is obviously designed to be used with the uh, TS100 uh, coupled with a uh, LiPo battery pack because the XT60 connectors are often found on LiPo packs. I ordered this from uh, Banggood because I wanted to uh, check out the uh, the quality of this uh, wire and I must say I'm impressed the wire they used feels like a really nice uh, silicon insulation and uh, it feels like it would uh, withstand the temperature of the soldering iron tip for a few seconds. Unfortunately I just cannot find this type of uh, double insulated uh, wire uh, on uh, AliExpress to order myself like uh, two or three meters of this stuff and make some nice extension leads for the TS100. Uh, I could for example place some four millimeter banana plugs on the other end that way I could easily connect it to one of my bench power supplies. So this is a nice product but it's a bit short for my needs. Uh, I think this one is about 40 centimeters long. It's nice if you're working with a LiPo battery because you would have that battery right there on your bench. But I, if I want to connect this to uh, a bench power supply, which is maybe one meter away from the bench, uh, it would be uh, impossible. Inside this bag, I have some uh, braided uh, cable sleeve. So there should be two pieces in here, each uh, three meters long. I got two pieces because I thought this might be really useful if it proves to be what they claim. So the uh, listing claims this stuff is um, uh, high quality. It has a working uh, temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius up to plus 150 degrees Celsius and a melting point of uh, 250 degrees Celsius with a fire rating of uh, VW1. So this VW1 standard means they test a piece of wire vertically on top of some cotton. Uh, they apply a flame for 15 seconds duration. They repeat the test for five times 
and the sample must not continue to burn for more than 60 seconds after the flame is removed. Also, dropping fragments uh, must not ignite the cotton placed below. So it's a pretty good standard and uh, I would be surprised if this cheap stuff from AliExpress would meet that but I would be happy if it would just survive 150 degrees Celsius for several seconds or an open flame for a few seconds without catching fire. That's really all I want. If it does that, I can for example use it for various uh, repair jobs. As you can see, it's, uh, it's that type of cable sleeve that uh, it, it wraps on itself so it would be really easy to like insert the cables inside this braid. You don't need to run them through the uh, middle of, of the braid from one end to the other. You can just split it like this and uh, insert your wires in here. But uh, let's do a quick test with my hot air gun set for 150 degrees Celsius and then a burner and see how this uh, uh, cable sleeve behaves. As you can see, I have about 250 degrees Celsius at the uh, output of the nozzle. So let's see how this uh, behaves. It seems to be surviving quite well at 150 degrees. So as you saw the insulation did pretty well at 150 degrees C with the hot air gun. Uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, any problems. But let's see how it does with a flame from this uh, butane uh, burner that I have here. Let's see if the flame is visible on camera. I just want it to survive like 5 seconds of uh, contact with the flame. So the flame is clearly burning this insulation. It, it seems to be uh, melting, but it's uh, extingu extinguishing itself. Let's try again. Yep, so it is uh, catching fire, but it's uh, extinguishing itself. So, uh, yeah, it will not survive on open flame. It will not protect your wires on open flame. But it's not that worrying, considering that it is uh, extinguishing uh, itself. And uh, this flame burns at a pretty high temperature. So I pretty much like what I see so far. And I think uh, this uh, insulation is uh, very good at least for my needs and I'm pretty happy with this uh, purchase. I think what they claim in the product description is true for this uh, cable sleeve. My next item is a small hand drill. I think it's uh, made out of steel because it feels pretty heavy. I don't think it's aluminium. But it has this uh, spring-loaded chuck uh, which is really nice. So you could attach a small drilling bit and do some uh, manual work with uh, this tool. So this is pretty much how you would use it. You, uh, this would rest in the palm of your hand and you would spin it like this. I would probably add some kind of lubrication at this end just to make it uh, run smoother. Uh, but for example, if you have some soft material, some soft wood, you could probably use this successfully and uh, drill holes gently. It could also be used for other soft plastics and I can think of a couple of situations where something like this would have been really useful to have. Uh, they're mostly stories related to my RC plane builds where often you need to punch a small hole through a small plastic panel or a small balsa wood uh, panel. So I'm pretty happy I got this. It uh, will be much nicer and faster to use this instead of bringing out the small electric drill, uh, connecting it to a power supply. Uh, that's more fiddly than one of these things which can uh, get the job done very rapidly. My next item is a syringe of solder paste. This is the mechanic type uh, solder paste. The part number is XJZ40. So this is a uh, leaded type of solder paste. And I get it as a syringe when I want to manually apply it uh, in small droplets to each pad or I get it uh, like this in this type of uh, can 
when uh, I'm applying it using a solder stencil. So it's basically the same stuff in just two different forms. Uh, I get this stuff from eBay. I'm not even sure if this is genuine mechanic or if it's fake, fake stuff, but I get this stuff from eBay, it's cheap and it works really well for all of my prototypes. Uh, this is the stuff that uh, I use. I don't see the point of paying like 30 or 40 dollars for a uh, bigger jar of some uh, brand name paste when this does the job just fine and I'm talking about prototype work here I'm not talking about the professional assembly or selling something because that would be a different story there you would want to use some um, some brand name uh, solar paste but for prototype work this stuff is great and uh, I highly recommend you get yourself uh, some of this if you plan to do some uh, surface mount soldering by uh, reflow and the last item in today's video is a uh, new smartphone mount. As many of you already know, I shoot these uh, videos on a smartphone and I'm always looking for better ways of attaching it to a tripod or to a gooseneck mount, uh, whichever I use around the bench. This one seems uh, nicer than the cheap spring-loaded ones that you get for free when you order a cheap selfie stick. It still uh, uses a uh, spring-loaded uh, clip to hold the phone but um, it just seems nicer and it also has this uh, adjustment part where you can uh, have the device in portrait or landscape mode and at the bottom it has this uh, tripod mount screw hole i'm pretty happy with this uh, this purchase i think uh, it will get used um, especially on my tripod uh, i think it will be really useful there thank you for watching that was all for today let me know in the comments section if you found something interesting Send me some feedback by clicking the thumbs up or thumbs down button on the video and I will see you next week with a new video.